thisyblitz.com. I think it's it. Mm. Mr. Fillmore, oh, my mum does it, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, I do it. When you do it, it's rubbish. It's rubbish, yeah. Rubbish, uh... Anything I do is rubbish, seriously. <laughs> At least I know. I mean, I know my place, you know what I mean? I did my bit. It was quite yeah. fun, actually. My contribution to this whole situation. And that's you done. That's me done. Hi, guys, this is Sunny and Shay. And we have Baby Tyro with us today, and you're watching the one and only DizzyBlitz.com. First of all, congratulations. What was life like before and now after Tyra, and how, how much has your dynamic changed since uh, the new edition? Um, well, thank you so very much. Tyra is now five and a half months old and uh, the past 18 months of our life, so from the moment that I got pregnant, yeah. things changed, but in my opinion, only for the better. But I think for me, Tyra has just been an enhancement to our lives and we've been together 14 years, so we were waiting to start a family for a very long time. Yeah, and uh, she's turned up, and like, like you can see, she tells us what she wants, even in an interview. She's not, she's not playing by the rules. She's playing by her rules, and uh, and she's quite good actually. And 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 being um, before she turned up, me and Shay were going anywhere, go wherever you want to go. Now we have to plan every time we would get into the car and work out how much stuff we have to carry with us, and that's where the difference is. Just luggage, but other than that, it's just fun, really. It's, it's quite good fun. Brilliant. And who does Tyra take after more, Sunny or Shay? Um, I think Tyra has a very feisty personality and I think she gets that both from her mum and her dad. We both are very confident individuals and um, we have strong opinions and uh, as her nursery worker told us only last week, when she's hungry, she lets you know. When she wants to be left alone, she lets you know. So I think she's definitely got that from both of us. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think she's got um, this personality that's developing and she's really close with my mum, right? And my dad. And so when she's with them, she behaves. When she gets away from them, she doesn't. And so that's the weird thing that she, they give her the calming aspect of everything. And she gets really when she's with us. So Sunny, you were obviously present at the birth. Um, yes. How important was it for you to be there with Shay? Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't want to be at the birth uh, in the beginning. Yeah, and uh, it's something that I thought, you know, just let my mum take care of it because her and mum are really close. What am I going to do there? I'm not a doctor. I wouldn't know what to do anyway. And um, so, but Shay really wanted me there. And me and Shay have been best mates from the time we've met. And I wouldn't let my friend down. So why would I let my partner of my life down uh, not being there? And then I said, right, I'm not going to, I'm just going to stand in the back and uh, call me when you need me. And then uh, when you get in there and you see your, your, uh, your friend going through that pain and your wife going through that kind of stuff. So all you want to do is just make them laugh, distract them from the pain. And so that's all I did. And so I just tried to distract her from all I heard you made a lot of jokes throughout. Yeah, my best work, actually. Uh, some of my best work that was during childbirth. It all came out then. Do you want to say something? How did your life change during pregnancy? Um, and is there anything that you wish you'd known before you were pregnant or giving birth? Um, my, my life changed quite dramatically uh, because um, before giving birth, I had no idea about my own family history with regards to pregnancies. All I knew was that my mum and, and her mother my great month grandmother had all gone through natural births but I didn't know about the physical change I was diagnosed with a condition called hyperemesis four weeks into my pregnancy um, basically it's chronic vomiting and uh, uh, it's been publicized quite extensively because Kate Middleton has it but something I wish I knew before I got pregnant was there's a big big difference between morning sickness and hyperemesis so um, this is partly the reason that Sunny and I want to talk about going through pregnancy because it's a condition that isn't really talked about enough and unfortunately some people just shrug it off as oh you're vomiting it's just morning sickness I actually almost lost my baby because in my mind I thought vomiting 19 20 times a day was normal uh, you know I thought feeling dizzy not being able to stand was just the initial stages of pregnancy it was when I was rushed into hospital that the gynaecologist actually uh, did a scan and, and told me that I was very lucky that after seven days of having no fluids in my body that the baby's heartbeat hadn't stopped. So I think it was at that point that I really had to think I need to start listening to my body. 
stop listening to advice from others because pregnancy is different for every single woman and uh, pregnancy is hard for every single woman and I don't think we talk enough about it. Oh dear. There's a lady down the road, down there. She was screaming like Freddy Krueger turned up. Oh, A scary man. I hope she doesn't hear it. Oh my God, where am I? Poor thing. So in addition to having the condition, you stayed as long as you could, working yes. as well. Yeah. So how challenging was that for you? Um, so I was given, and I think this is another aspect that we don't necessarily talk about enough as women. I think as soon as we've given birth, we you know, go straight full throttle into motherhood, and that's a beautiful thing. But those nine months of pregnancy, I think apprehension, uh, you know, takes over for any woman who's going through her pregnancy. I think that for any woman going through this, you have to weigh up in your own mind as to what you think is right. Because I didn't want to ever feel that being pregnant was a hindrance. It's not. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever been through in my life. Um, and I love what I do. Doing our shows on BBC WM and BBC Radio London, it actually gave me a voice to tell the listeners what I was going through. So I think they went through it with me. You've had a girl, so if, do you find that there's pressure from your family to have a boy and do you feel that family name carries on through boy? See that's a really good question because uh, from the moment uh, we shared with mum and dad that um, we're pregnant, um, firstly they started crying and they were in India at the time and then because they were crying it was early in the morning everyone in the uh, everyone in the kutti at the time in the, in the in the house came down to seeing these guys crying and they were like they started crying because they were crying and all of a sudden five people in the room were crying and we're on the other side of the phone saying hello are you all right and, and, oh, oh, oh. and they're all crying but nobody knows what's going on right because they were so happy and then uh, finally my uncle got the phone he goes hello who's this i said it's sunny and he goes uh, okay everything okay uh what happened what happened i said uh i, I didn't really want to share it with you but you know me and shay are pregnant and he started crying even louder because he was so happy, right? And then my auntie took the phone, who sort of composed herself. It must be really bad. Please just don't hide it from me. Tell me what's going on. I said, me and Shay are pregnant. And then all of a sudden she was like, oh my God, they're pregnant. You should be happy, right? So this is how it went. Ex so this went on for 20 minutes, okay? So cut wrong story, it went to 20 minutes. Mom composed herself, dad composed herself. They came to the phone and uh, then dad goes, uh, uh, it, how is Shay? Take her home. Make sure she's safe. Just make sure everything's okay. And mom came on the phone and goes, listen, make sure that you take time off work if you need to work. And this is our first day that we just sort of worked out that Shay is pregnant, right? And then within a minute of that, she goes, it doesn't matter about anything else. We just want a healthy baby. Okay, so just look after the baby now. It's not about you two, it's about the baby. And a week later, the conversation came around and said, right, I'm going to do a lordy because she's going to come. They just started doing the maths in their head. And they said, right, she's going to, uh, the baby's going to come around lordy. They said, we're going to do Lordy. I said, what if it's a boy? She goes, I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. It's going to be our first grandchild and we want to celebrate the birth. And so that was my parents' attitude. Uh, and uh, that's the attitude that I've always uh, been brought up with, that everyone's equal. My sister is an amazing woman. Uh, my family have um, members who are blue chip company head holders, you know what I mean? Breaking glass ceilings left, right and centre. So in that respect, yes, the family name continues through the females as well. So we've never had that problem with you know, having a boy just to carry the family name. It's not about that. It's the individual that counts. The name can come and go tomorrow, you know. So a really good question. And I think this is the kind of question that hinders some of our community. And we just got to see past gender. And that's a really big issue and contention of point for me and Shay as well. And that's why we're trying to bring our child up gender free as much as possible which is not hard, which is really hard. Every time you go to the shops, everything's pink or blue and we can't just find ordinary clothes for our child right now just to make her look like you. You look amazing. Uh, I don't see any pink on you right now. You look dressed really well. So that's what I'm trying to say. So that's how I would like my child to see a woman is no different from a man, even though we have different, you know, biology and everything. But when it comes to the mind, women are a lot more intelligent. And anyone who thinks otherwise, I think, you know, they need to just grow up. Um, so Sonny's parents, whilst I was pregnant, uh, actually, had talked about the fact that they were so over the moon to be grandparents and to be a daddaji and daddiji. So this is their first grandchild from their son, their eldest son. Uh, Sonny's dad actually uh, said to me, we have booked a hall, we are going to be doing a lori and we're gonna celebrate the birth of the baby. Now, for anyone who knows, the lori previously has always been celebrated for a boy. Uh, but Sonny's parents told me straight away, we do not care 
about the gender of this child. Whether it's a boy or a girl, we are going to throw a big party and we're going to celebrate our baby carnival. So for me personally and for Sunny, we didn't care about the gender of our child. We just wanted to have a healthy and happy baby. And I would definitely say to anyone, we live in a world where actually time and time again, girls achieve more than boys. And uh, in my opinion, it would be your stupidity not to celebrate if you have a girl. And what kind of ethos are you going to bring Tyra up with? Well, uh, I just think me and Shay are people who are people peoples. And there's a lot of influence from my religion. Uh, and there's a lot of influence from my spirituality, uh, which is not sometimes comes from the same place. So spirituality and religion are two separate things, I think. Uh, and all we want to do is bring up a child who's going to you know, do seva, selfless seva, and do stuff not for recognition because it's the right thing to do. So that's the kind of ethos that me and Shay have, you know, implemented in our lives, and hopefully she'll pick it up. But the way she's going right now, I think she might be a snob. So that's that's what that's the indications, as you could have seen earlier in the video. <laughs> And how involved are you at home in terms of nappy changing? So uh, this was the arrangement. Uh, Shay will look after the child while she, she was making the child in her belly. So that was her contribution to this child, even though I helped a bit earlier on. And uh, now for the 18 years, it's my responsibility. So you noticed how I walked out first. And now, because you want to ask me questions, then Shay's taken over now. So my job is up until 18. Hopefully by that time, she'll be earning some money so she can chuck her out. But I've got her for 18 years. So that's my responsibility, changing nappies, feeding and all that kind of stuff as well, everything. And what advice would you give to first time dads, especially Asian dads? I see, it's interesting because I think Asian or any dad from any part of the world have their own challenges and economics plays a big part in that. And uh, I know that my father had to go and work. So my mum was the, you know, the nurture giver and my dad was there, you know, doing all this overtime. He was my example of working hard and this is what we do as a man. And things have changed in so many ways. My dad now, is so nurturing towards my little child. It's like, who are you? Where were you when I was a kid? You know what I mean? So the only advice I can give is everyone is unique. Everyone has their own story, but there's some similarities is that be compromising. And uh, and and if you think you can't afford a child, if you think you can't um, look after a child, the baby brings its own luck and it takes a whole village to bring up a child. Any more plans to have other kids? Uh, so what, uh, our plan is uh, to involve everyone in the family when we do have the next child. So now it's not just about me and Shay, it's about me, Shay and Tyra. So Tyra needs to have a say in this. And uh, as you can tell, she can't speak very well at the moment. She's just about communicating for food and changing nappies and everything like that. And so when she's about 10, we'll ask her, do you want another sibling? Do you want to give up your throne? And uh, and is she and then obviously she's ten, so she can actually look after the kid. So we've got a babysitter, in-house babysitter, right? So we're gonna wait at least another ten years. I say that, but who knows? Next year we might be doing this interview again. You can never predict when it comes to kids; they'll come up when they want to come. Of course. And final question: What's the most rewarding thing about having a Tyra? Uh, I think it's uh, discovering that you're not the most important person in the world. You know, like me and Shay, uh, when we met each other, we knew. I was important to me, Shay was important to herself. Then we found each other and thought, we can be important together. So Shay's a strong, independent woman on her own. She can stand alone and she can take on any conversation and everything, and uh, physically as well. She's a really strong person. I can do that independently as well with my dyslexia and all of my, uh, so like some of the challenges I find being a dyslexic, but I feel that I'm a strong person. And then all of a sudden, all of that went out the window when she turned up. And now I know how it feels to live with your heart running around. And I don't know if you ever had that feeling where, you know, you're always trying to protect yourself. Oh, you know, this, that, the other. Now you see her and think, oh, don't fall over. Not because she's going to get hurt, because I'm going to hurt. And that's, a, I never felt that before. Now I know all those years I was messing around on the roof and so my dad was shouting at me and my mum was like, so now it all makes sense. Uh, they weren't angry for my pain. They were angry because they might get hurt. Yeah. So you learn this, I guess, as you get older.